if you haven't heard this already, well, you're hearing it now. QD OLED is the new hotness in display tech, and a lot of folks are expecting it will make the best looking TVs we've ever seen. Is that true? How does it work? I'm gonna tell you all about it. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and a quick thanks to Anchor and its Nebula Cosmos 4K laser projector for sponsoring this video. More on them in just a moment. So when I first covered QD OLED from CES earlier this year, I noticed there were quite a few questions in the comments and some confusion as well about how QD OLED works, why is it supposed to be better than regular OLED, and what its limitations may or may not be. So we talked to Samsung Display and to Nanosys, masters of quantum dots, asked them a bunch of questions and made sure we got the real story. So whether you have no idea what QD OLED is all about, or you're just curious about how it works and whether it has an Achilles heel, I've got the answers for you right here in this video. Before I jump into it, please consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons if you end up liking this video and want to see more. This is going to be a super fun year for TVs and I'm going to be all over it. So join me. Thanks for your support. Now let's dive in. Before we get into how QD OLED works and what makes it so exciting, let's first review how what I'll call regular OLED works. LG Display makes virtually all of the OLED panels we've been seeing in OLED TVs for the past several years. Whether it's a Sony, Philips, Panasonic, or yes, LG OLED TV, the panel is made by LG Display, and we call it a WOLED or WRGB OLED panel. The W stands for white and has a lot to do with how regular OLED works, but just importantly, how QD OLED does not work. So WOLED panels use blue OLED pixels coated in a yellow phosphor to make white light. And from there, a color filter carves out the colors red, green, and blue. Those are our color primaries. And from there, you can make any color you want. Now, using a color filter, and this is key right here, that saps a display of its brightness. When you carve out different wavelengths of light to get just one color, you slash out a bunch of luminance or brightness. That's why LG Display adds a white subpixel to the red, green, and blue subpixels to brighten things back up. But even with that clever workaround, OLED TVs have never gotten as bright as LED LCD-based displays. But that's not been a big deal because OLED TVs have perfect blacks leading to excellent contrast and, well, overall they look amazing, which is why they tend to get such great reviews. Hey, just a quick break to say thanks to the Nebula Cosmos Laser 4K Projector by Anchor for sponsoring this video. The Nebula Cosmos Laser 4K takes all of the hassles out of pop-up movie nights while delivering a best-in-class experience for you and your friends. This projector's compact design and convenient carrying handle make for the most portable laser-powered projector you can buy. And that's literally a big deal since its laser light source delivers dazzling images even with ambient light around that can scale up to a massive 150 inches. In less than three seconds, this projector essentially sets itself up, adjusting the image using automatic vertical and horizontal keystone correction and laser sharp autofocus. So go ahead, put it wherever you need it to be. The projector will take care of making sure your movies look perfect. And it's gonna sound great too. With two 10 watt full range drivers and two five watt tweeters, you'll get high quality Dolby sound that's as big as the image itself, no separate speakers required. The Cosmos Laser 4K projector also comes with a 4K Android TV dongle bundled in to access content from any of your favorite apps in 4K. Or you can connect whatever device you want with HDMI. Use the link below to pre-order your own Cosmos Laser 4K projector and get up to a 32% discount. So now that we have a baseline understanding of how W OLEDs work, we can now talk about how QD OLED is different. QD OLED displays also start with blue OLED pixels, but instead of coating the blue OLEDs with a yellow phosphor to make white light, they instead slap a sheet that's had tiny nanoparticles called quantum dots printed on it in front of the blue OLED pixels. So when the blue light hits those quantum dots, they glow red and green. So what you end up with is an RGB display with no color filter robbing it of its brightness and no white subpixel trying to bring that brightness back. Now there are a ton of advantages to this QD OLED approach, which I'm gonna cover in a moment, but this is where folks with a baseline understanding of how these displays work end up having some questions. So let me dive in just a little bit deeper. In a QD OLED display, there are three layers of blue OLED lights, 
One layer activates a green quantum dot, one layer activates a red quantum dot, and one layer is allowed to basically pass through as the blue color that it already is. Nothing wrong with that approach, except that folks who know a little bit about OLED compounds know that the blue OLED compound is the one that wears out the fastest. In fact, that's why there are precious few true RGB OLED displays where you have a red OLED, green OLED, and blue OLED. That blue wears out faster than the red and green organic materials, and therefore it's hard to keep the three colors balanced. That throws everything out of whack and makes for a TV that just won't stand the test of time. Amazingly enough, quick sidebar here, true RGB OLED displays are only used in reference monitors that cost tens of thousands of dollars. I presume it's because movie makers have tons of money and are willing to pay up for the best no matter how much it costs or how often they have to spend that kind of money, which must be nice. Okay, so I would understand that you might be thinking, hold on, if the blue OLED compound wears out fastest, then why are they using blue? And doesn't that mean bad things for the QD OLED if it's based on blue OLEDs? Well, first off, don't forget that W OLED is also entirely based on blue OLEDs. They just get used differently. And secondly, blue OLEDs are used because they have the highest energy waveform and therefore provide the highest brightness potential and also do the best job of activating the quantum dots. But then there's a concern about uneven wear. If there are three layers of blue OLEDs and they're each responsible for doing a different job, then isn't it technically possible that one of the layers might get used more than another layer and wear out faster, thus causing color imbalance or even worse, burn in? And again, technically the answer is yes, that is scientifically feasible. If all three layers of blue OLEDs were driven to their maximum brightness capability whenever they were used, and if one layer, let's say the layer that makes the red quantum dot glow red, was used more than the others, then yes, it's possible that blue OLED layer could wear out faster. So I posed this highly unlikely scenario to Samsung Display, and they informed me that first off, the blue OLEDs aren't pushed to the max all the time. And on top of that, the cool thing about how QD OLED works is that each pixel, each layer, can be monitored for performance and then adjusted. Basically what they told me is that they can monitor use and output and adjust on the fly to make sure that the red, green, and blue pixels remain in balance for a nice long time. And that very same technology can also be used to monitor and address any burn-in potential as well. And it's all automated. You don't have to run a manual pixel refresh program or do anything at all. The display can just take care of itself. Now, that isn't to say that burn-in isn't possible. It is technically possible. It's just highly unlikely. So now it would be totally fair of you to say, oh yeah, where's the data to back that up? To which I reply, Samsung Display says the data is coming. It's hard to quantify burn-in potential, but they are running a bunch of stress tests and they should have hard numbers for us to look at in a matter of weeks. That's what I was promised and I'm gonna hold them to it. But you know what? My takeaway from the conversation, Samsung Display isn't worried. They know all eyes are on them and this new QD OLED display technology. They know it's gonna get picked apart, scrutinized, and stress tested by everyone from competing TV makers to YouTubers to TV reviewers and ultimately the general public. They know this. And not only do they not seem worried, they seem quietly confident. Not smug to their credit, just very quietly sure of themselves. And obviously Dell is too. After avoiding conventional OLED gaming monitors for years, it's now all in with an Alienware QD OLED gaming monitor. First gen tech and Dell is like right there for it. And then there's Sony, which has a history of not being first, but instead waiting for the kinks and tech to get worked out and then coming to market with a product that really excels. Here Sony is ready to go right out of the gate with a TV based on this QD OLED technology. Those to me are indicators that QD OLED is technically sound and we don't have much to worry about. So yeah, maybe it really is okay that we get excited here and not wait for some unexpected shoe to drop. Because I mean, the advantages are clear. Higher overall brightness, higher color saturation slash color brightness, more accurate colors, wider color gamut too. We're talking about somewhere close to 93% of Rec 2020 color space, which I don't think we've seen in a consumer display before. And all with even better black levels and shadow detail than before, and sharper details thanks to superior contrast modulation. 
So reining it in a little bit, yeah, I think QD OLED is gonna be insanely expensive for a few years. And I don't think it's the ultimate perfect display technology. There's QDL to consider, which is all emissive quantum dots, no organic materials at all, and micro LEDs could get even smaller, and that could wind up proving to be a reasonable consumer TV tech someday. But for now, QD OLED is a great evolution of OLED technology. It's next on deck, and from what I've seen so far, it's the most exciting thing to happen to TVs and gaming monitors in several years. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Do you want to see the very first look and review of Sony's new QD OLED TV? Then smash that subscribe button and ring that bell because it is going to be right here on this channel. Leave me a comment if that gets you excited. Oh, and here's two other videos I think you might like.